I'm glad you were able to come to colloquium today. We expect good talk today. Our colleague Dashin Chu will be giving the talk. You see his title. You've likely seen his abstract. It looks very interesting. We look forward to hearing what you have to say. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, actually, I thought that you were going to cancel my talk <laughs> this week. I tell, I, I saw your email yesterday. <laughs> I am constant as the North Star. <laughs> <laughs> So actually, I just uh, grabbed a little bit of my, my old talk. <laughs> I didn't want to just approve the time I left the The good thing I just presented the contents to the uh, this summer in China. Although I said, uh, at that time I used Chinese, and now <laughs> I got to use English, which I'm not good at. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> So uh, uh, anyway, so this talk is based on the joint work with Jin in, in biological science department uh, in New Zealand State University and John Ray, which is in the other departments as I you see, and Minchin. <laughs> uh, so uh, we started this project a uh, long time ago. I think it's was in 2007. At that time, we, 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 we uh, Jim and uh, John just uh, interested in the dispersal of plant hoppers. So we just uh, walked in to see uh, what kind of work we can do. And uh, yeah, of course, we did some work on uh, uh, insects, edge behavior. And uh, actually, right now we're still doing some experiments to check our model predictions. Uh, but uh, anyway, at that time, I just uh, noticed that there are tons of mathematical models for uh, also parasitoid or predator prey. <laughs> uh, but all those models, almost all those models, just as you fix the delay for the maturation of individuals. In other words, all individuals just uh, get into next stage or get in, uh, becomes into adults using the same uh, time period. So that's a uh, fix the delay. Well, I did notice that one or two works, two papers, uh, I include, uh, uh, which includes uh, distributed maturation times. In fact, the author just concluded that uh, the, 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 the introduction of distributed maturation time just doesn't bring any quantitative changes to the population dynamics. So I just totally disagree with that. So I decided to do something about that. So uh, first, I uh, just asked my collaborator John to do some literature review to find out how the maturation times are distributed. And then he just found uh, uh, 68 data sets for 23 species. And then we just uh, use those data sets to fit a gamma distribution and to see how those data distributed. And uh, we noticed that uh, the shape parameter for the gamma distribution in most cases is just to take a small value, like between two and four, or even two to six. Uh, we know for the shape parameters, if the shape parameters just to take some small value, relatively small values, then then we, then it may not be reasonable to you. You fix the delay to describe the maturation time because there's so much variability in the maturation time. What is your x-axis, like days, hours, or? That's the uh, uh, x-axis, that's the number, the values of the shape parameter n. And the vertical axis is the frequency. Represents okay, how many cases just to have from the n equal to two to, to four. Okay. 
So you can see this is the highest number. And only for a small number of cases can take a uh, for, for, for n can take a large value. But in that kind of cases, it might be reasonable to use fixed delay to describe the information. Okay. So basically, this picture just uh, gave me the, the, the biological base to study the impact of this regression metric region times and the population dynamics. Okay. So <coughs> now, uh, how to study the impact of this tribute to the uh, metric region times and the population dynamics? Uh, a simple or let's say an easy way is to just say you produce the, uh, the, the gamma distributed uh, metric region times into a classic model and then compare the parameters, right? So uh, I just uh, yeah, come to this work uh, published by American Network. Uh, these two guys, Godfrey and the Hansel, are, are really big ones in the ecological modeling or in the college. And uh, here, they just uh, assume, okay, the hosts uh, have four life stages, H1, H2, H3, H4. H4 is the adult stage. And then H2 is the vulnerable stage. Uh, that is, the host in H2 stage can be attacked by parasite, adult parasite tool, uh, which is P2, and then change into immature parasite tool, P1. Okay? And then P1 is the developing P2. Okay? So, in their model, we just assume for each stage, we just assume fixed design. So in other words, all individuals in like a H1 stage just uh, get into H2 stage after T, a fixed time T sub H1 time. And then get into H3 after T H2 happens. And then etc. Okay. So now to study the, 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 the impact of <coughs> distributed uh, uh, maturation time, I just uh, simply <coughs> introduced the uh, uh, distributed, gamma distributed uh, maturation time into H2 stage and P1 stage. Uh, all other stages like, uh, remain the same. Okay. <coughs> so, using this chart, we can easily write down the balance equation. So that is this one. So here in this and then in the equation, this is an MP2, and I'm oh, sorry, MH, and uh, MP sub 2. These two guys are, are mature region reads. Uh, MP2, that's the host in H2 stage, mature into H3 stage. And uh, this is a, 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 a immature uh, parasitoid mature into uh, adult stage, P2. So now, for these two, two terms, I just introduced the gamma distribution. So like a P, M, P sub 2, here I just introduced the gamma distribution maturation, G sub M. Here M is a shape parameter, chi 1, as a minimum maturation time for the perfect two. Okay, uh, it's basically just a shifted gamma distribution. And uh, similarly for the uh, H2 holes, so I can introduce uh, another uh, gamma distribution with shift parameter n. And then next, I just study uh, what's the impact. If I change the value of n and n, how the population dynamics is going to change. And uh, here I just uh, simply show you the uh, stability um, <coughs> So the left side of the graph, this graph, 
just uh, uh, the stability for boundary for the model with fixed domain. Okay. Uh, so uh, the region below all those blue curves, this region, our stable region for that uh, interior value for okay. And the Gaussian uh, has to just uh, use this diagram to make a big deal. That is, <coughs> they found that if the ratio of the host generation time to the curve tool generation time is equal to uh, 0.5 and the 1.5 and 2.5, the system just uh, exhibits generation cycles. In other words, the solution to the system uh, just to show oscillations with uh, oscillation period roughly equal to one generation time of the host. So that's the generation set, uh, which uh, biologists are pretty interested. Okay. And uh, that's just uh, for fixed domain. So, so fixed domain. Uh, after we introduced the gamma distribution to the fixed domain model, then we have this one. Uh, still, below the curve, for example, the blue curve, below the blue curve, that's the stable region. Now you can see the stable region is much better than what it is before, <laughs> in the case of fixed domain. That's one thing. Another thing is that the generation cycle simply disappears uh, when the ratio equal to 1.5. Even the generation cycle that still exists uh, around 0.5, but this this visual point just now depends on the value of the uh, shape point. So m and a equal to about 10. That the generation cycle appears near 0.5. But if m and n equal to 3, the generation cycle appears around the next point 3. It's much less than point 0.5. Okay. So, from these two graphs, you can see, okay, <laughs> the distributed distribution time do bring some quantitative changes in that population of levels. Do you agree? <laughs> so, anyway, uh, the next, so we just try to find some experiments, try to do some experiments to check our model predictions. Okay? So, next, our objective. One is that we just find a, 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 a host of particular system to examine the uh, impact of age structures on the population dynamics. Uh, here, our, our biologist, Jim, he just found that uh, oh. the, 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 the copy weevil and its percent. So we're going to use them to do our experiment. And the uh, uh, second objective is that so we're going to use, develop another model to fit our experiment. To generalize our results. <coughs> so this is uh, <coughs> our objective next. And here, this is a picture of this is a uh, post copy weevil, and this is a first uh, I just don't know how to pronounce the name. It's hard for me. Thank <laughs> you. So, so what happens? <coughs> Those copy weevil, they just uh, find a, uh, like a, find a bean, and then they act on the surface of the bean, and then within like uh, two days, one day or two days, those eggs just hatch, and then they just dig into the into the bean, and then they eat bean, and then eat, eat, eat. finally they come out from the other other side of the. Okay. But once they get close to the uh, surface on the other side, if 
a person employed can mean we just say, oh, let's uh, <laughs> get a uh, <laughs> there or nabi <laughs> there. And then they just, uh, just uh, use their some kind of spy, kill them, kill the barbie, and then they make egg in the body of you know, like that one. Okay. Uh, normally one larvae finally can become into one person. Uh, of course, uh, if this larvae is not attacked, uh, then it just uh, come out, it comes into an animal. And then it just make an again. Without uh, even drain, it can be easy. <laughs> so it's really easy to do this uh, uh, experiment. Uh, but the, 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 uh, for this experiment, so the, the disadvantage is that uh, we couldn't just detect the age of immature forms and also immature perceptual. That's not good for our mind. Okay, so we can only see the adults. And normally for our experiments, we count adults, the number of adults every. 12 days. Okay. And so every 12 days we got the number of animals, both host and host. And then here this is a sample data uh, for just a one replica. Uh, at the beginning, this is, uh, we just uh, introduced the host, and then the host is just a shoot up. And then once you, you, we introduce the parasitoid, uh, I think uh, here, and here, and then the person who uh, the host the member is uh, jump down. And uh, if you look at the data, data you can see that the, the number of hosts, the red, red spot. Sorry. <laughs> a red spot is uh, many just uh, going up and down, go up and down, go up and down. So this up and down pattern exists in all replicates for the control experiments. Okay. So therefore, uh, if we want to uh, develop a model to model those, this system, we definitely, at least, got to have such kind of up and down patterns in that system. The <laughs> number of days. <laughs> the x axis, the number of days, the number of, the number of in the host. The red one, that's a, a host. The blue one, that's a person. So, this is just a short time here. Okay? We, we got to make about. Uh, Four years now, and so it's, <laughs> uh, it's just a short, short, short time period. <laughs> Otherwise, it's too long, and you just couldn't say anything. <clears throat> All right. So next, I, I, I'm going to develop a model to describe the, uh, our experiment. Uh, same thing, I still uh, divide our holes into four stages. Uh, the H1 stage, which includes egg stage and the early stage of larvae. Okay, early stage. And H2 stage here we call the window stage, because only during that time the person can attack. And then H3, H4. Uh, Parasite was well, just the two stages, P1 and P2. Still P2, the adult stage. Okay, and uh, here uh, uh, in, uh, in the stage H1, H2, and uh, H4, and also P1, we introduced the uh, gamma distributed multiplication. Well, for the H3 stage, we did it. Because one that stage is kind of short, just about two days. And second, biologically, it's hard to determine 
the, the, the time period for that state. Okay. So it doesn't work. Assume fixed delay for H3. And uh, similarly for P2, which is the uh, 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 exponential distribution for P2. And uh, another thing here, I have to handle uh, the fecundity. Okay? How the adults need X, and how those X can develop into nerve. So that's uh, another thing. Okay. Okay. So anyway. So according to the chart, I can simply uh, easily write down those equations. And here, this x basically represents the uh, recruitment rate of H1 stage. And uh, M H1, M H2, that's the maturation process. M P2, that's the maturation process. And uh, for the x ray, uh, for the recruitment rate, X here uh, just assume the rate uh, equal to the minimum of number of beings at that time and uh, a density dependent birth rate of adult. This is a highly density dependent. We do observe that. Even one being can carry at least uh, six to eight eggs. Finally, we can only see one host can come up. Okay. So that's a, a basically really high density dependent. And here, the, the number of beings searched by this equation, we just assume, and the, the number of beings must be greater than or equal to 0.5. Uh, it, uh, half being just doesn't work. <laughs> okay. And also we assume that the number of being at the T sub n, here T sub n represents the time the since census state. Okay. Uh, every time we count the number of adults, we replace the oldest uh, dishes of beings by fresh beings. So that the uh, host can, can continually end on um, new beings. Okay. And uh, here, roughly, we just uh, assume the number of beings in each type is the same. Uh, therefore, you can see this system basically now becomes into a positive system, <laughs> impulse system. Uh, for the system, I didn't do any analytical analysis. So far. <laughs> so next, <coughs> I, I'm going to uh, fit our model to our data. But uh, before I do that, I first ask them to get some <laughs> data for, uh, for the host only. In other words, I want to fit the, our model to the experiments where we only have hosts so that I can check whether my model cut, cut the age structure of holes somewhere. <laughs> Is that right? That's the first thing I got. So uh, they did uh, three replicates, uh, and uh, within the first uh, 49 days, they count the number of holes every day, okay? So that I can see the age structure. And uh, here are the colors, let's see, green, yellow, and the red. Those three colors represent three replicates. The number of adult holes in three replicates. <coughs> and the blue one, the blue, blue black little uh, stars, that's my model prediction. So I anticipate. Uh, one set of the uh, uh, one set of the data for one replicate using Mises weird <laughs> method, and then I got a one prediction, okay. one model prediction. As you can see, this fit is not the right. <laughs> the right. Uh, both quantitatively and uh, quantitatively. Okay. 
So this is just that I fit one replicate. And I fit another replicate. So this is another uh, fit. Uh, you can see it also in that today. And uh, the last one. The last one. Okay. Fit the third graphic. Well, for all those three phase, we can see uh, the model predict the highest population and the lowest population pretty, <laughs> pretty well. All right? Uh, therefore, I can see uh, our model basically uh, just uh, cut the, the age structure of holes, for sure. Otherwise, you just put in the after with this, this highest one, lowest one, highest one, lowest one. Well, definitely you will have some difference between model prediction and uh, that <laughs> That's for sure. Okay. So that's my conclusion. <laughs> but this. And then next, I just update our model to my uh, to the to the interactions between host and the person. And here this is uh, one page. Okay. Uh, from from here, uh, from here you can see uh, uh, sorry the red solid curves. So that's my model prediction. And the blue solid curve. That's a uh, model prediction for perfect hole. Red represent that uh, hole. Okay. And the dash line represents the uh, real data. Okay. Uh, still, the, 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 the red dash line represents the holes, a uh, blue dash line represents the percept. <coughs> and uh, from this page, you can see okay, my model predicts the population, the host population, up and down, up and down. And the parasitoid, the real, oh, sorry, the host, real data, also start from here, up, down, 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 up, up. Okay. <laughs> so basically what I mean is that uh, our model does catch that up and down kind of which exists in the lab uh, data. But uh, in the lab data, the, the, uh, the, the, the perfect way does not to show up and down. Okay. Actually, actually, yes, the, 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 the perfect way to show pure is not really significant. That's uh, our so called power analysis. We believe power analysis. Uh, so, this is a one discrepancy between our model and the number. This is uh, just one page. And uh, if you look at another page, you can see also our model always predicts the hopes going up and down. But, not in person. <laughs> oh, <laughs> models still predict the first I toys up and down, up and down, but the real data. Okay. So this is another thing. Uh, this is the number of it. You can see all my predictions up and down, up and down for my holes. But, and also for the, for the first I toy. <laughs> also for the. So this is uh, 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 my page. Uh, let me show. Okay, next. <laughs> this is uh, what I just done recently. Uh, next, I get to find out what's the impact of distributed delay, uh, distributed maturation height in the population dynamics. All right. So uh, next, I just to show you another one. Okay. You want your next DOC? So this is a, a, a sample analysis for the real data. Uh, 
here we got uh, three cases, uh, three kind of experiments. One is controlled, uh, where we don't do any experimental manipulations. Okay? It's just a natural control. And uh, second one, that's a normal treatment. Uh, in these cases, we just uh, manipulate the, uh, the, the, the edge two stage, the vulnerable stage, or the window stage, so that the, the mean period in that time is about 2.5 to 3 days. How do you do that? Huh? How do you do that? Oh, that's a genius. <laughs> that's just a genius. That's a genius biologist, the gym. Jim Crowley, he just found out uh, a way to manipulate the world of steps. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, at the beginning, uh, uh, that's kind of hard. Yes. You have to do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but he did find a way. And uh, actually, uh, he is, uh, uh, for the high variance treatment, it just uh, manipulates uh, the 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 the, 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 the H2 stage H2 host, such that the mean H2 stage still is uh, about 2.5 to 3 days, but the the standard deviation in the maturation process is much larger than that the normal cases. Therefore, you get uh, basically you get a uh, different uh, distribution in two cases. Okay. So in the high virus, now you can see okay the mean ab abundance in population size. In the high, <laughs> in, the, in the high virus, the host is just much larger than the, the, than that in normal treatment. And the girls I told about this is uh, much smaller than that in normal cases. Okay. Well, this is a really not big deal because sometimes you may have uh, some random effects. Okay. And here, we, if we look at the here, the standard deviation in the uh, population. So in the high virus, the standard deviation is always less than those in the normal uh, normal variance. So in other words, from these experiments, you at least you can see the population is kind of more stable in the high variance <laughs> This is uh, uh, the, 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 the one kind of data analysis, simple. And uh, uh, now I just uh, use my model <laughs> to describe, to explore the impact of uh, variability in H2 stage and then the uh, okay. Uh, and the first one, is it hard to see? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just uh, grabbed uh, grab this picture from the from <coughs> our paper. <laughs> you may have time to produce another. <laughs> does, does it look any more sensible in the frequency domain? What do you mean? <laughs> I mean, oh, it's transform. Huh? Either one of them, really. It, it's very hard to see what's going on there. Do they do they make sense somehow if you Fourier transform them and display them in the frequency domain? Uh, I, I don't need to do that because okay. because basically here if you look at okay let me see the upper graph represents the high variance trip high variance treatment okay the lower graph represents the normal variance treatment okay and in the upper one you can see. The population, both host and the parasitoids, just a very up and down, up and down, pretty regular. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And uh, in the normal variance, the population just up and down, up and down, not that regular. 
Does that make sense? And yeah, but there's, there's some pattern visible though. So maybe just mm -hmm. throwing the lower the, the lower or no, the upper one. The upper one is obviously somebody. I mean the red one, the red one. The red one? Seems to be better sort of pattern. Yeah, but, uh, of course. <laughs> of course. In uh, in both cases there's some patterns. And actually in the high virus uh, the solution basically is just a uh, periodic solution with short time period. And the solution in uh, no variance, no, normal variance, also periodic, but with really no period. But here we still say the solution is more stable, is stabler in high variance than that in low variance. Why we say That's right. That's just because, okay, in a high variance, you can see the solution always up and down, up and down, pretty frequently. Well, those up and down, up and down, basically just coming from the impulse. Because remember, every 12 days, we, we, we put uh, fresh beans into the replicate. And though and adults can just uh, continue uh, lay eggs on the fresh beans, and then those eggs, when we come up, become into adults. Either adult parasitoid or per adult host. So you can always see the solution, always up and down, up and down with a period, something like a 12 days. But, so that's why in the, in, in the high virus, you can see the up and down, up and down frequently. But not in the, uh, in the normal virus, in the sense that except the up and down, up and down due to the impulse of fresh beans, we have some other periods in the uh, periodic solution, uh, oscillation in the solution. So in this sense, we see the solution as, or let's say the population as stable in high variance. No purpose. Does it make sense? Okay. If, if you replaced uh, beans more often, like every day or more frequently than that, do you think you could remove that periodicity? Actually, I did <laughs> uh, study that kind of things. I tried the rep uh, I tried the impulse every couple days every six days, every three days. And uh, you can always see the solution. Either with three days, or with six days, or with 12 days. Always easy. <laughs> but uh, all those kind of uh, oscillation, just because of the impulse of the resource, not because of, of the population dynamics itself. Yeah. So that's uh, what it is. And also, if you look at the, the, the magnitude of the oscillation, you can see the magnitude of the oscillation in high virus is uh, a little bit smaller than that in normal virus. So, in this sense, <laughs> you can also see the population is stable than in the high variance than that in the low variance. So it looks like the biggest frequency component here, if I understand right, this is what you're saying, the biggest frequency component is the, the resource that component. If you take that component out, mm -hmm. if you 
if you subtract, say, a, a sine wave or something with that frequency, if you subtract some periodic component with that frequency in the appropriate magnitude, is there any biological sense in what's left? Is there, is there any reasonable description of the model that you have if you artificially subtract the periodic, the periodicity due to the resource? Well, experimentally, I don't know how to handle that. <laughs> No, 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 I'm talking about but, in the model. This is something that the model could show us that an experiment could. Well, in the model, I think uh, our model has, has already shown that because here in the hybrids, we just uh, have pure resource purity, impulses. And uh, in the below, except the, 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 the 12 day impulses, we still have some other pure, long periods, for example, from here to here, that's pretty nice. Mm -hmm. That kind of periods definitely encoded in the population dynamics. That kind of periods just uh, due to that. It's definitely come from the interaction between host and the person. Right, so what Not I'm asking, between what I'm asking is if you if you somehow remove, if you filter out the component in the model, filter out the resource component and look only at those things that are left that you're describing, is there some biological way to explain the model that you would have by taking your model and subtracting the resource component? Uh, if somehow you remove the the impulse of resource from the model, right. then the biologists are going to it. <laughs> they just say, hey, what you model is totally different from what I got. <laughs> I just don't, don't buy it. They, they, they just don't buy it. At the beginning, I, I, I told them what's the, when they show me their data, and they just, I saw some kind of up and down and also some random effects here, and I told them, hey, can you just control the, 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 the experiments a little bit better to reduce the effects of the randomness? <laughs> and then the biologist, the gym, just uh, refused to accept uh, randomness in there because uh, he think he controlled his experiment perfectly. <laughs> so, so they don't use a random model in the process, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> At the beginning, they just uh, refuse. Yes. There are some random effects in their data. But uh, finally, I just uh, show them <laughs> from the, they're totally definitely there something. <laughs> okay? Is it because they don't appreciate it? No, 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 not about yeah. They don't appreciate it. They, they, mm -hmm. they, they just uh, refuse to accept uh, the, the, the imperfectness in the experiment. They just think, uh, okay, I control the temperature perfectly, I control the days perfectly, everything. <laughs> and <laughs> you know, this is permanent. Yeah, but it's, it's intelligent in the every system, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's, that's right. <laughs> So realistic. Yeah, realistic, good, definitely. <laughs> because, uh, I, and then I just, uh, you know, what I argued with them, I just told them, okay, uh, you control the temperature perfectly in the refrigerator, but the once you pull them out, and then you guess them, when they come, come the adults, we have to guess them. <laughs> uh, you guess them, all those kind of things are just random stuff. Definitely, for uh, bring some, uh, Impacts on the population demand. I'm just afraid to learn new mathematics. Or <laughs> so, no, by the way, you still just uh, accept the randomness in the system. So, anyway, that's a uh, uh, nice simulation, okay? Right. Can you go back? No. <laughs> so, uh, basically what we did, we just uh, uh, introduced the age structure of dimensions uh, into a model, and then we studied the, the, 
of the impact of the age structures on the supernatural dynamics. And as you can see, uh, partially our model fits our nav data. Well, not uh, quantitatively, uh, but at least uh, quantitatively. Okay? So what? And uh, another thing our study also suggests that field biologists collect, should collect the data related to past age structures in order to understand the population dynamics. So that's uh, basically the summary. And the next, uh, what else? Questions. This is, uh, so one thing is that uh, how to improve our model to fit the lab data better. Because as, uh, as I showed you that uh, our predictions on per se is not really uh, that close to the real data for per se okay. And also the quantitatively uh, model predictions is still different from the real data. So now the question is how to improve our model. Uh, one thing uh, I'm thinking is that uh, uh, functional response. Probably you got to change the functional response to describe how the first actually attack the host. That's uh, one thing that's to check. Another thing I'm thinking, okay, now I, I use the discrete, uh, continuous model, probably it may not be bad idea to use this script model to describe this. So probably next I'm going to use the discrete model to reduce the hope And another thing is the impulse, the effects of the impulse. I partially study the, 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 the effects of the impulse uh, in the image. But that's uh, another question we can handle. Okay, and then finally, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>
And then you can see every line is the replace being. Uh, we got a new being so at the beginning, at the beginning, and then uh, on day nine, and then day eighteen, and then next. And using this information, you can see the most holes just to come out becomes into adults on um, day 24. And then day 26. And then day about 48. In other words, every 24 days, all the, uh, the, 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 the uh, one generation just uh, come out. So, after that, I just told me, okay, you guys better use 12 days to do that experience. To count the, 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 the number of posts. That's all. So after this simulation, <laughs> all data is just uh, using 12 days. <laughs> Any else? Thank you again. Thank you.